Oh my, oh my God, so sorry. I didn't see you there. I was watching TikTok. Um, you don't know what TikTok is? It's like YouTube, YouTube shorts, right? That's like YouTube videos, but they're like squished. So they're like vertical. And then they're like five seconds long, like an addictive substance, but totally legal and free. In today's video, we're gonna be trying TikTok for graphic design. There's a whole little world out there called Design Talk, and it's a bunch of tips and tricks on how to use Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator and all these cool little things that supposedly we don't know about. I'm a professional graphic designer, so I'm gonna put these to the test and see if they're actually helpful. Let's go ahead and get started with this one. This is how you can improve your 3D type in Illustrator by basically doing nothing. So you start out with the thing you want to make 3D and then set this color to white. Go to the 3D materials panel, choose object and then inflate. And here's where you're going to change the lighting. So I change the color to kind of like a purple and then you can have a play with the height and softness. My final render, I put it on an off-white background to make it more realistic, but yeah. Wow, that was very easy to follow. I feel like I can totally do that. Let's do it with Grayson's graphics again. Very similar to our last 3D one, so I'm really hoping that this one works better than the flowers. Oh, wow. Dang, that's already looking good. Oh my God, it says it's rendering. That was so easy. Whoa. Yeah, that does look really cool. He puts it on a white background. Wow. I think mine kind of looks like party balloons rather than metal droplets, but that definitely has to do with the font that I chose. Five pen tools for helpfulness. Fun, super fun. Definitely creative. All the way, all the way. Graphic design tips from a lazy designer, aren't we all? I'm sure you're obsessed with Google. Great answers like I am. Okay. It is literally just an abstract image from Pexels blurred. Uh -oh. Look how cool already. Instantly cool ass gradient. I didn't catch what she did. Is she on Canva? Oh, maybe that's Figma or something. Let me find an image. What image should I use? I'm just gonna take a picture of myself. Nice. So here's a transparent layer. I don't think that's how it works in uh, Illustrator though. Let's just see if the concept the same where we just add a really big blur on it. Oh, wow, that does work. <laughs> What's something super like modern? Modern brand, Helvetica. Yeah, she was definitely right. You can totally just take any picture and make it blurry and it'll look good. Maybe I should take another picture. Okay, I have a super pixelated picture of rainbow sprinkles and I'm gonna apply my blur on them. And yeah, definitely makes a cool little gradient background. Was this helpful? I'm gonna give her two pen tools. She didn't tell me what program she uses. I'm guessing Figma. I don't even know, it could have been Canva. But was it fun? Definitely fun because it's super easy. And is it creative? I'm gonna give her five paint bucket tools for being creative because I wouldn't have thought to really do this and actually use it in a design. And she's been using this in design. So that's pretty cool. Let's do another one. Let me grab my phone. Finally, an excuse to watch TikToks while making this video. Definitely not Facebook. That's for old people. These types of graphic teeth kept coming up on my Pinterest. Okay. First. Drag your image in. Then remove the background and convert it into a smart object. Then go to filter, pixelate, color harder. So he's making like a comic book type of design, but it's like trendy now. Wait, what? Oh, I'm getting confused fast. He's going so fast. I don't even know what he's saying. <laughs> Are you guys hearing this? Oh my god, that was so complicated. <laughs> Let's open up Photoshop. <laughs> I'm so scared to do this one. This is gonna take a minute. I got my image, I'm removing my background, and I'm converting it to a smart object. Done. Filter, pixelate, color halftone. He went with 5, 108, 162, 90, and 45. How do I know if it works for me? <laughs> I'm not seeing anything. Oh, there it goes. I would say this is not for beginners. I know where to find a threshold layer, but he did not show where a threshold layer is. Probably like right there. Now merge the two layers. Select color range. Should we put our design on a light t-shirt or a dark t-shirt? Uh, let's put it on a light t-shirt, I guess. Now press backspace to delete the selection. I guess I should put it on a t-shirt. Now I take my face, I stick it on my shirt. He put it on the bottom half like this, boom. And then he said blending options, color overlay. 
Well, he went with like a red. Wow, what the heck? I feel like I just got off a roller coaster. That was insane. Was he helpful? It depends on your definition. Was he helpful for me? Yes, because I paused the video and I went through it step by step, but I also knew what he was doing. Would he be helpful for an absolute beginner? I don't think so. I don't think that cramming that into like a 20 second video would be helpful for a beginner. I'm gonna give him a three pen tool for helpfulness. Was this fun? I'm gonna give it a two blob brushes on the fun. Maybe it would be funner the second time around doing it. It was kind of a lot of steps. Was it creative? Yeah, I'd say it's creative. Fill those buckets up. There we go. Okay, so he's drawing a little squiggle. Wait, what's he got? This is going way too fast already. <laughs> okay, he's got a squiggle and he's cutting it with the knife tool. I can do that. And then he wrote down Adobe Hacks and he's going, oh crap, I didn't even see it. He duplicated it and he's doing the little blend thing. Oh, and that's, that's it. <laughs> I don't know where the pencil tool is. There it is. And he made a squiggly shape. It looks like an amoeba, almost. Ugh, his looks so much better than mine. Okay, that looks good. The smooth tool, you just grab that sucker and just draw around it and it makes everything a little bit smoother. Mine was already pretty smooth. Cuts it in half. Nice. And he wrote Adobe Hacks. I'm gonna write Grayson's Graphics. I'm guessing he selected both of these and he went to Object, Envelope Distort, Make with Top Object. Whoa, that's super cool. I've always seen people do this, but I've never really used it before. Then he took it, he made a second one and he scaled that one down, made that one a little bit lighter of a shade. Then he did Blend. Oh, that does not look right. I think I screwed it up somewhere along the way. Is this one easy to follow? No, no, it's not easy to follow at all. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have a clue if this is working or if this is not working. And I know this is like a super popular like thing with graphic design, but I have not done it personally just because it never really fit my line of work. I'm out here on like Adobe forums trying to figure this out. What is that? How am I doing this one so wrong? I don't know how to do it. Was it helpful? I'm gonna give it a no because it was not very helpful. Was it fun? No, because it was so difficult to do. So it gets a one blob brush and creative. I think this could have been really creative. I actually did learn some stuff while doing this. I'm gonna give it a three. Let me show you how to do something awesome and really easy on Adobe Illustrator. Make a shape, doesn't really matter what, it'll look cool. Mesh tool. Then keep on clicking in different spots, change your colors around. Head green. Exporting takes away the edges. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's very excited about it. I think I can do that one. I think that his looked particularly good because it was on a black background. I just make a giant square, make it black, and then command tool to lock that in place. Now I have messed with the mesh tool a little bit and I'm gonna make myself a little apple. It's looking a little bit more like a tomato than I wanted it to. That's okay. <laughs> So the guy in this TikTok was using the mesh tool, which is this sucker right here. And essentially what you do is you just point and click on this sucker and you can color your dots. Boom. So that's how you can go from a pretty plain apple to now like a pretty cool gradient apple that's got some shadows on it, but still a vector image. And then he went and said, slap a bunch of grain on there. Also, all of his corners were empty. Yeah, I mean, that is pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was more helpful than I even needed him to be. A five pen tool on helpfulness. Was it fun? Yes, definitely. It's very therapeutic. And creative, I would say so too. This was a 10 out of 10 design hack. Let's move on to the next one. It says, how to steal a design font edition. She opens up Pinterest. She says, find the victim. Searches for trendy little font there. Then she goes to whatthefont.com, drags and drops it. Then she Googles the name of the font with free download 
and drops it into Illustrator. Wow, I actually followed along really well with that. I'm impressed with myself. We need to find a victim. Trendy graphic design brand. Oh, ho, ho. look at that. Oh, snap. Let's totally steal this font. This looks sick. I would love to have this font. So I'm just gonna take this and drag it and drop it in here. It says identifying text in your image. I usually have my phone on do not disturb and it's out of sight, out of mind. And now it's sitting here and it's boop, boop, boop. Just notifications left it. Oh, it's ready. We select it. We hit identify font. I don't know if this is gonna work. This is totally just some random picture. Okay, while this loads up, I should probably introduce myself. Um, my name is Grayson. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. On this channel, we do graphic design content challenges and all kinds of stuff, not taking ourselves too seriously and just having fun messing around with Photoshop and Illustrator again. If you like videos like this one, please hit the subscribe button and then you'll see more of me and we can continue to grow this giant graphic design channel to the scale that it should be. <laughs> I got carried away there. What the font? This is not loading up. Oh, there it goes. Let's see. This first option, it's totally not the same font, but I can see where it's coming from. The E has that little swoop. This has that swoop, but it's missing this giant swoop on the end. It almost makes me worried that maybe they took this font and kind of like made custom typography. But that being said, the G is nowhere near. This font doesn't have O's in it. Give it to nudes. None of those are it. You can see here, this is the picture that I pulled off of Pinterest and this is the closest font that there was to it. I found something kind of close, but that's not it. So was this helpful in me actually finding the font? I'm gonna give it three pen tools. It didn't do its job. I'll give it three blob brushes. It was kind of fun. I'm gonna give it three paint buckets. It wasn't the most creative thing I've ever seen. I'll give credit where credit is due and it didn't bring home the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Find a cool picture. I used Justin Bieber with a mustache. Let's use this picture of me that we took earlier. Fit it to your white box. Oh, I didn't even know we had a white box. Okay, perfect. Oh, he's stretching it. Oh God, erase the outside. He's using the eraser tool. I'm just gonna select subject and remove the background. Uh, but maybe he's onto something because look at that. I need the eraser tool. Get an emotional background picture. I did wolf. Okay, I just found this man looking at a sunset on a bench. There it is. It's super blurry. Yeah, that does look cool. Cool quote. A designer is only measured by what they design for the world. Like far away from it just in case. That was a good tip. I feel like it should be like right there. Finally add some details. Oh wow. Okay, I don't think mine turned out that bad. Very helpful, five pen tools, very fun and like very loose and totally creative. I've never seen anything like this. I'm giving it five paint buckets. That was one of the best ones. Okay, so they made a bunch of flowers here. Then they go to 3D materials. They're making it metallic. I don't even know what they just did. How long is this video? That's a 13 second video and I don't know what happened. I've watched it like five times now. Let's kind of copy her flowers first. They're just really goofy looking <laughs> flowers. Beautiful. She goes to 3D and materials and inflate. Now we're at the point where it looks really weird. <laughs> Definitely doesn't look attractive at all. Hers is different than mine. I get this error up here that says cannot apply as multiple instances. Maybe this at one point worked, but at this point you have to go into all of these individually and apply the settings here. Okay, I think I've done this. It doesn't look the same in her version the bubbles like poke at each other and stuff. And my version doesn't do that because they had to be individually changed and they didn't work together as a group because that feature is not available anymore. Was she helpful? Oh my God, with all of them, they aren't that helpful. <laughs> 
<laughs> it goes so fast. It's not necessarily the TikToker's fault for not being helpful, but it's nearly impossible to understand a complex process on a 15 second video. Two pen tools for helpfulness. I really love messing around with the 3D stuff, and I think that the result itself is still pretty fun, even if it's not 100% exactly what it looked like in the video. And if there's a way to do this, then I would love to do it again. I'm gonna give it five paint buckets for creativity. A lot of times as graphic designers, we find a picture that we wanna use for inspiration for colors. And it'll be like a picture of daisies or something in a wildflower field. And we'll use that as a color palette. Let's say I wanna build a color palette out of this. And you just use the eyedropper tool and you'd be like, oh, I like that yellow and this pink. And then you're like, great, now I have a beautiful color palette and I'm gonna make a daisy inspired brand. And what this TikTok is saying is instead in Photoshop you can go to filter pixelate mosaic and you can get basically the color palette right off of here so now that you have this instead you can really fine tune that oh it's that yellow I want and that purple and you can see the big difference between these two color palettes and how I got more natural selection from here rather than here but there's another trick that you can do if you go to color dot adobe.com insert your photo and just like that it pulls a color palette for you with the best colors using their special technology not only does it pull these colors but it also gives you like color blindness colors it gives you all these other like information it gives you the cmyk were they helpful yes they were much more helpful this was very clear and straightforward and easy to understand was it fun yeah pixelating things is definitely fun i'm getting a bit five blob brushes for that and was it creative I have never thought to pixelate an image to use that to get the colors. But I would still recommend Adobe Color if you've got it because that's pretty helpful too. Okay, so looking back, these are all the designs we made today and some of these hacks were actually pretty helpful and some not so much. If you think of some crazy design talks that you've seen and you want me to try, tell me about them in the comments below and I'll go find them and put them in the next video. Also, if you're not subscribed, we are at 5,979 subscribers and you could be the 5 5,980th subscriber if you hit the button right there right now. It'd mean a lot to me and I'll see you in the next video.